first off, thank you guys uh, for taking time out of your day. I know it's terribly difficult um, to hold attention spans for high schoolers right now. Um, I, I know what it feels like to be on the opposite end. So I hope you guys are able to take you know, at least one or two things away from LT and I. Um, I guess I'll start with a quick intro about myself. I graduated from Hoven in 2013. Um, before going to Hoven, I went to Arlington Christian Academy right down the street. Um, shout out to Paige, because that's where she went as well. We went to school together um, all throughout uh, middle school and high school. Um, but for me, you know, going to Hoven was a culture shock for the first year from coming from predominantly really small school, predominantly African-American school. My freshman year, I would I would define as culture shock. Um, but there were some there were some things that I learned early on that you know I embraced early on that that kind of perpetuated some of the the growth throughout you know freshman, sophomore, and junior and senior. And I'll get a little bit more about that in that later. Um, but I also played basketball um, there all four years, and I originally came in to to really focus on basketball. And um, TK does a, a really great job of making sure we think about the classroom, um, everything that happens on the court and uh, about life. And honestly, guys, that what's really helped me navigate some things, especially when I got to college. I went to Ball and Wallace um, University in Brea, Ohio, right outside of Cleveland. Um, I also went there to play basketball. But the things that I learned early on at Hoban um, helped me navigate some of the things that took place at Ball and Wallace. Um, one of those things were I... Uh, I suffered multiple concussions going in onto BW. I suffered my first one actually in summer league uh, before I even got on campus. And I had two or three others throughout you know, my sophomore and junior year. And I knew I, early on I had to make a decision as to am I, am I, my chances are going probably really slim, but you know, I've, I've really developed myself, my leadership skills, um, the things outside of basketball to be able to make a decision that's not only best for right now, but best for my future as well. Um, so I decided to stop playing basketball in the middle of my junior year and uh, focus on straight academics and getting involved on campus. But I, I say this, um, and I tell people this all the time, had, had it not been for Hoban, I wouldn't have been able to make that decision uh, as quickly as I did because Hoban was an opportunity for me to, to learn more about myself, um, learn, learn more about my classmates, people who I didn't actually grow up with. Um, and it really kind of like catapulted it to where I am now, I work at the Cleveland Foundation. Uh, I actually just got promoted uh, to a senior HR role, um, but I started there as an intern um, my, my last semester at BW, um, and I've been there for the last five years. Uh, and I've also went back and gotten my MBA. So it's been a really, really interesting uh, start to my career. And I'm, I'm looking excited to, to share more and answer any questions that you guys may have as well, I'm gonna pass it over LT. You on, I think you're on mute. I'm sorry, y'all, I was muted. Uh, like Jalen, I'll give a little background. And my, my intro to Hopeman was also a culture shock. Um, I attended Akron Public Schools up until high school. So I went to David Hill Elementary School, which is about six minutes from Hoban and Roswell Kent, which is probably all of 10 minutes from Hoban, um, which is no longer in service. But again, it was a culture shock for me. And um, you can ask TK after my first year at Hoban, I was, after my first semester, it's like, all right, y'all, this was cool, but uh, I'm probably gonna head out. And um, that gets to my first point. I got three points for you guys. And there is the three Ps, it's people, person, and purpose. And, and that segues into my first point of people, um, get around good people and be a good person. Um, that would be one of the key things that take you as far as you want to go in life and anything you do. And for me, I was able to surround myself with good people, good leaders um, like TK, uh, like Coach Lucy, uh, Coach Tom Goodall, Coach Ralph Orsini. I got to see what being a servant leader was like because it wasn't a, hey, I'm going to tell you what to do and boss you around. It was, I'm going to lead you. I'm going to inspire you. Like Jalen talked about um, basketball practice we would go to a classroom for 20 minutes before we practice and we talked about life we talked about leadership skills and um just the things that that went so much further than basketball or football or sport um and carries into everyday life and um 
with that, it's, it's not just um, your teachers or your coaches, it's your friends, it's your peers. Um, Jalen and I talk all the time. I graduated in 2012, a year ahead of Jalen, um, basketball wise, technically, I was a leader, captain of the team. Um, and for me, it was a chance to pour into Jalen constantly. And likewise, Jalen poured back to me. And what I call this, Coach Arbo is going to love it. We uh, we talked about this in North Carolina not too long ago. You're one of two things in life. You're either a user or you're a connector when it comes to relationships. You either meet people because you want to use them one day and have nothing to do with them again, um, or you connect with people. And, and when you connect with people, it goes both ways. So um, I do a lot of things philanthropically, and, and that's literally what Jalen does. We're always communicating. So then that standpoint in that aspect we're having a lot of conversations where Jalen's leading me and he's asking me how he can help me and that's that whole idea of servant leadership how can I serve others um and you see the same thing you guys have a phenomenal principle and that's one of the people I learned that skill from um so so pay attention to people around you family friends coaches teammates classmates um learn those skills pay attention to those skills um and to to lead we must be able to serve so that's my P. That's people. Sorry if I get long. I'm trying to keep it under 10 minutes. But my second P is person. And person being me or you yourself. Everybody always hears self-love is the best love and self-love. Well, what is self-love? It's taking care of yourself. And, and the first part of that, I believe, comes physically. Um, how do you take care of your body? Um, and I'm a longtime athlete. So for me, nutrition was big. The discipline and nutrition and working out. And, and I think that goes further than athletics. Is It's how you love yourself, right? Um, and I believe we all suffer from one or two pains in life. You either pain, suffer from the pain of discipline and eating right and working out or the pain of regret. Like, wow, I should have, could have, would have. And um, you guys are at a point in life and at an a institution where um, the discipline is there. And, and if you buy into it um, in your studies, in your athletics, in your um, service, um, I, I did service hours just like all of you have to. Jalen did them. When I was doing those service hours, not one time did I say, hey, I think I'm going to I'm gonna start a philanthropy or, or this is going to be my life passion. But that was something that was poured into me to serve others. And um, it hasn't left me in life. Um, but self-love physically and then it's self-love mentally. Um, how do you take care of your mental? Do you talk to people? Do you have an outlet? Do you like to read? Do you like to go in the backyard and shoot free throws when, when you just need to calm down? Maybe that worked for Jalen, not me. I missed too many. Uh, but but what is your outlet and do you have somebody to per talk to? Um, so this is the analogy I always give um, people in my philanthropy about taking care of your mental and having other people. Uh, sometimes we don't always see the flat tire on our car. And sometimes when we lift the hood up, we don't see that valve that's loose. So it's always good to have a mechanic that you're constantly talking to, communication, because the mechanic knows the ins and out of a car better than anybody, right? When they pay attention to it. So how do you expect someone to pay attention to you and help you if you're not communicating, if you're not um, building that relationship? Um, so again, just that physical and mental, mental health and, and having an outlet. And my therapy is purpose. And when purpose, when I say purpose, I'm not saying, uh, I'm saying God's plan for your life. And when I say God's plan for your life, I'm not talking about a Drake song. Um, although I like that song. I'm saying, uh, what has God put in your heart to to grow his kingdom and grow the world? Um, for me, my passion was sports. That was my passion, right? Football. Um, and God allowed me to follow my passion and chase my passion as far as it would go. I got to play in, um, sorry, I went on to play in the SEC for ten, University of Tennessee and on to the NFL. Well, my passion in college led me into what became my purpose in life. Uh, I went in to read a book to a, a third grade class and um I, I built a bond and a connection with those third graders so I went back the next week on my class break and I went back the next week and then the next week I brought a teammate and then the next week I brought a basketball player and eventually it turned into this entire mentoring program in the Knoxville City Schools I say that to tell you that I got the opportunity because I was chasing my passion of football and God showed me my purpose for life and now um I'm out of football I'm away from Tennessee and now God has shown me a way to take my passion and my purpose and mix them together. So now I get to pour into young people like I love to do um, and the young athletes and the next generation. Um, and that's all I got. Okay. Um, as we reflect on some of those words, Sean, you have some good questions. Go ahead. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Gabby. I'm a sophomore here at Hobbit. And I want to know, what are some tips for disciplining yourself? 
That's a great question. Um, and it's going to go, go align to what LT just said. Um, one, you have to make a decision um, that you really want to, to be the best version of yourself. And it's okay to have um, to have a group of people because you can't do a lot of great things alone. Um, but for me, especially back in that age, it was okay to have, you know, my teammates that pushed me on the court, but also had friends that, that weren't technically athletes that pushed me in the classroom or, you know, we shared a, a service, a, a passion of service. So it's, it's good to surround yourself with people who, you know, have, a, you know, something in common, a, a shared value rather than uh, just, you know, surround yourself with one type of people and they may motivate you um, in one area, but not so much the other area. And then um, make sure you, you know, have open conversations with those people. Ask them, you know, this, these are my goals. You know, I wanna, I wanna develop a, a sense of trust and, and I really want you um, to help me stay accountable. And I think when you open up to people like that, uh, they don't take that for granted. Um, some people may be better at it than others, uh, but when you do, you're, you're developing not only a relationship that's gonna help you um, prosper in high school, but it's gonna help you with your communication skills uh, well after um, you graduate from Holden and, and you know, as you endeavor in, in the next steps in your you know, college and uh, professional careers. I agree with that. The piggyback off Jalen is find people that you think are disciplined and see what they're doing. Um, mm -hmm. The great expression in sports is, what are the greats doing? What is, I mean, my whole thing was always, well, if I'm going to be my rookie year around Khalil Mack every day, I want to know what air he's breathing. I want to know what kind of water he's drinking. Um, find someone that you view as disciplined and, and mimic those habits and, and, and make them fit you and, and normalize it. Make it a schedule, make it routine and, and hold yourself to that standard of I'm going to follow this routine. Question back to all seven questions. Hi, my name is Italy and I'm a sophomore. And my question is, what is the most beneficial skill that you developed or learned while in college? I'm sorry, what was the most beneficial what? I'm sorry, I can't hear you. Skill that you learned or developed while attending Oh, I'll go first, Jay. So by far, uh, my most beneficial skill I learned at Holman was the ability to communicate. And um, I told a funny story to Coach Arbo again. We, we have a lot of conversations. But again, find good people, stay around those good people, have good conversation. Um, I remember when I I was probably a junior or senior at Hoban and my friends were talking about networking and meeting people. And I'm like, network? What you talking about? Like PlayStation, Xbox, the internet? And they're like, no, like networking, building your network, meeting people, and like branching off. And I'm like, I've never heard or knew what this was and and at first I felt incompetent but I used that as a, um, a a chance to gain knowledge and gain competence and I worked really hard at honing my communication skills and then I realized I was in an environment in a place where even in your studies um, raise your hand how many of y'all have given a presentation in the past year right you're at a place where those communication skills whether you know it or not are, are being grown and and in the real world um, that's one of the skills that gets you further than any kind of knowledge you may even have to be honest if you're able to communicate what you know and and how to um, get people to understand that um is huge really that's the best question one of the best questions i've had asked in a while especially because you know trying to single down to one skill that I learned in Hoban, um, it's tough. And I, I, I say, I don't know if this is a skill, but it's something that I learned um, as I grew and felt comfortable, you know, when it comes to things outside of basketball and, you know, raising my hand in class and asking questions and, and getting to know other people. I realized that um, people always watch how you carry yourself and how you treat others, no matter if you don't think they're watching or not. And I think me learning that skill helped me develop uh, a sense of um, a sense of trust in myself that I, I can you know, have a positive impact on not only my teammates but my peers in the classroom as well and people that I walk along with in the halls and and it wasn't for them um, people like TK and uh, my 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 teammates like pushing me to actually you know do more and and be a better leader I said I wouldn't been able to to do some of the things that I'm doing now um, for example I used to used to go to TK's class my senior 
senior year, ninth year, study hall every day and talk about, you know, I started off talking about basketball, what I thought we could do differently on court. Um, but, you know, we ended up talking about you know, literature and poetry and things of that, that, that nature that and we were able to carry over to the court. So um, my biggest thing that I learned is no matter if you try to, you know, hide in the background, if you're a leader, people are going to identify you and they're going to gravitate to that. So it's important for you to step out of your shell and, uh, and be ready to step up because, you know, we're, we're lacking um, you no know, leaders that are willing to step up and, and lead people in the right direction. What was that? What was something that didn't go well that you really learned from early on in your college experience or your college experience? You don't have to get too specific. I, I think for me, it was it was my injuries, the concussions. Um, I learned a lot about myself during that time because I had them uh, pretty much back to back, it felt like. And I got, uh, I just became a starter my freshman year towards the end of the season. In that first game I started, I got a concussion. And um, it was just, it was crazy for me because all the work that you put in, the hours you put in as an athlete, uh, especially when you get to college, it's like, oh, I, I just got to that the, the highest point of my career so far. And um, it was really difficult because I, I had not experienced it before. And you're around people that obviously you didn't grow up with. So they don't, they can't tell something that may be you know, wrong with you. Um, so they're, they're not able to pick up on things as you normally know, your friends in high school or people that you grew up with your whole life. Uh, so that was really difficult for me. Um, and then on top of that, once I got the the, the last one, Making that decision to 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 say I'm done with hoops that was that was a tough decision for me and I I still look back on that decision and I'm very grateful for it because um, halfway through my junior year it gave me time to kind of start over as a you know a full time student versus a student athlete and I was able to get involved in um, some things on campus that I know I would not have had the time to do while playing basketball and it was kind of like a, a, a domino effect of, of this good things is me being in the right place you know half the battle showing up I don't know if TK still says that but it's true um me just being at the right place at the right time meeting the right people um you know it's, it's really important to to not only um show up but persevere through some of the things that you go through because we're always going to go through things um and it's important that you know you just keep going sometimes it, it may be hard to get out of bed it may be hard to Know, stay up a little late to, to do homework, but it, it's all going to pay off in the future because if you have discipline now, it's going to just continue to build your habits. Um, but for me, I think you know that the concussions piece and, and not being at home, I think that was very a very difficult time for me. So for me, um, I'll I guess I'll give a, a, a pre hoping story and a post hoping story that are kind of um, one and the same. Um, took the placement test for Holman, St. V, Walsh. Nobody held it against me. God knew where I was supposed to be, but I was geared up to go to St. V. Um, you know, mom, I want to go to St. V. My friends are going there. They, they win the state championships. Like, that's where I want to be. Um, and again, and young, when I was young, I was a pretty gifted athlete and a, a really good student. I mean, really good. And I didn't get in St. V. And it was like, whoa, they just told me no. For, and that's not the first time anybody told me no in life, of course, but the first time that I worked so hard to get something and I just knew I deserved it, um, you know, what, maybe a sense of entitlement, but a lot of it was, hey, I put the work in to do this and make it here. And they told me no. And I, it shook my, my 13, 14 year old world a little bit. And I'm going, okay, mom, well, I'm going to East. That, that's a done deal. She's like, mm, maybe not. You're going to go to Hoban and, um, now I look back on it, the connections and the people that I've met at Hoban, I, it's insane. My life would not be on a course that it's on. I can't say that I'd be sitting here at the University of Michigan without that course. Um, again, going back to my first P of people, uh, I played for Coach Rossini all through high school, right? So Coach T and I have a really good relationship, although I never played for him. Uh, I get on the phone with the head coach of the University of Michigan, Jim Hartball, and he goes, yeah, I know he wasn't one of your references on your resume, but 
I called Tim Terrell to ask about you, and he said nothing but great things. Did I know that Coach T and, and Jim Harbaugh had a good relationship? Absolutely not. But because of, like Jalen said, the things you do and no one's paying attention or the relationships you build that can do nothing for you or that you think may not be doing anything for you at the time, um, when you connect with good people and you're good to them, um, it always comes full swing. But my first no. The second no, um, I had some injuries in college and things like that, but my second no came uh, my last year of college, red shirt senior year, ready to go. I'm confident in myself again as a student and as an athlete, and I'm playing my way in the NFL this year. Point blank, point blank, period. Well, I go to the NFL as a third down pass rusher. You know what happened to me in my senior year of college? My coach took me off the field a lot of third downs. We had a very good recruit come in, and, and we force fed him on third down, but that took me off the field. And for me, I was being told no. And essentially, I was a well, you're a pass rusher that doesn't get the pass rush. Good luck getting to the NFL. Um, but again, that 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 other P word that I didn't use that Jalen used perseverance. I knew I was disciplined. Go back to that question. Discipline. I was disciplined in, in what I did. And I had direction of where I wanted to go. And and that couldn't stop me, essentially. Um, but that skill of, of being told no um, and knowing who you are and where you're going, I think is, is huge. And, and for me, those were uh, two difficult things to deal with at the time. And I look back on it and uh, they made me such such a better person. See, there's another part I wanna add to that question because I, I've shared this more than, more than the numbers I can count about the decision that it took for me to go to VW versus at any other college. Um, and you were very helpful in that decision. Um, so, uh, I knew I wanted to play college basketball at the D3 level. Um, I, I, I knew it was important for me to not only pick a um, school that was going to be good for me on the court, but off the court as well, long after I stopped playing basketball. And um, another one of you know, LT and I, good friends, D. Allen, um, he was for sure going to Mount Union. And everyone thought for sure that I was going to go there as well. I, heck, I even thought I was going there. I actually visited like a few more times more than him. And I knew Mount Union was in the Alliance area and you know, BW was in the Cleveland metropolitan area. And I'd heard you know, more great things about academics on the side of BW versus Mount Union. And I was still, still hadn't made my decision. And TK pulled me aside one day um, and said, hey, you know, I know, you know, me and Deanna are really close. And, uh, but I think BW may be a better choice for you academic wise of you know, things that you want to do off the court. And, uh, to this day, I still appreciate hearing those words because um, I, I knew at that time I had to make a, a, a big boy, grown man decision in high school and say, no, where do I really want to go next? And um, I called the coach, the Mount Union coach the next day, and I told them, you know, I, I'm deciding to go to PW. And even though at that time I didn't feel confident in my choice, I knew it was the right decision. It was a strategic decision at the time. Um, to go to BW because had I not gone to BW um, and then stopped playing my junior year, I don't think uh, I would have been as involved at Mount Union because it's just out the way, a little bit further out the way versus in the Cleveland area um, because I got involved not only on campus, um, but also um, in the, the, the nonprofit civic world uh, in Cleveland, which led me to ultimately get my position now at the Cleveland Foundation. So, TK, I want to say thank you for that. I've shared that story numerous of times at BW on Tour Guide. So, um, you and Mrs. Brayman told me that. She told me not to not to pick a school just for basketball. So, I still appreciate those words today. I'll tell Tina when I, when I see her. You forgot the part about Tommy and uh, Dwayne coming up. But that's okay. We, don't worry about that one. Hey, guys, what about um, – and by the way, LT story, LT, I don't know if you knew this, but I think Harbaugh called Coach T just looking for a good person in general before your even application hit the desk. And, and that's where hmm. your name came up. Um, he was telling me that a couple of weeks ago, actually, I forgot about that piece. So that's two interesting pieces of how your networking and your people uh, connections and relationships matter and what they say about you. Because the flip side is if you're not somebody that you can trust and you're not somebody who you know, just going to stay out of trouble. You know, we have to be honest. We, we can't lie for you. Okay, because then our credibility is shot. But you don't have to lie for people like Detroit and Jalen because they've earned it. They've earned your trust. So, guys, when you get when you guys went to your schools, because Tennessee and Baltimore were pretty tough academic schools, 
in what way were you prepared and what way were you not prepared? What, what should these kids know about Hoban that might be able to, what, what could they take advantage of here that might prepare them academically that maybe we're not thinking of? What part of your education kind of helped you get through, I guess? And I think found wish you would have been a little bit more focused on. So for me and going to Tennessee, um, not comparing, but at the same time comparing for me versus a lot of other um, student athletes in general, not even just football, but especially football, but student athletes, I had such a better foundation of what to do and how to do it. Um, and I, I stuck with the same plan I, I had in high school. I mean, guys, the, the presentations, you're gonna do them in college, the studying, you're gonna have to study to be able to master anything. Everything that you're doing now, um, it doesn't have to be Archbishop Hope in college prep or this prep or that. Like you're in a college prep school. Let me let y'all know that. So again, these habits and these skills and the discipline you're building now, just keep it as you go along. I mean, honestly, um, I started college at Tennessee two days after my, my three days after my high school graduation. Um, and when high school graduation party that day, two days later, I'm um, driving to Knoxville to start school in June or May, June, June. Um, and I got there and I'm nervous. I'm about to start college, right? In the summer, early summer classes go fast. And I get on the phone about a weekend. I call my mom. I'm like, mom, you won't believe this, but football is my hardest class. That's the hardest thing for me to learn right now, just because it was at such a high level. Um, the, actually, the actual school learning and, and what I was getting in the classroom, for me, it was like, a, hey, if I stay on the same plan I was on a month ago in high school and take in the information, study the information, um, present well, uh, turn on my work, be accountable. Um, you'll be okay. Yeah, I had a similar experience with hoping definitely preparing me academically to, to be able to go into classrooms at BW. I will say uh, too, um, it definitely prepared me again for the, the, the culture shock. You know, you go in the whole thing, you go in there for four years, you really get to meet the people, the classmates, the teachers, the administrators, you get a connection with them. Um, but it gave me the confidence to do the same thing at BW. And as you guys, uh, you know, mature and grow, you'll realize how you know, teamwork and communication is always going to be a big deal, a big issue, no matter where you go, no matter what team you're on. Um, uh, it's going to be one of those things to where if you can communicate to uh, all different types of people, uh, it will help you uh, in the classroom, it will help you in, in, in the uh, workforce as well. Um, so Hoban definitely prepared me academically, but it also, it gave me the, the experience and confidence to work with different different people and, and outside of the classroom as well. Because once you get to college, all the group stuff, uh, all the group assignments, you're gonna have to deal with that um, more times than uh, you would think of. And you know how you present yourself to your classmates, your group mates, that will ultimately determine how well you guys function as a team on that project or in that class. Quick quick to piggyback on that, just, just to let y'all know that uh, some things you may not even understand that you're gaining and skills that you're gaining or the system is set up for you to, to, to thrive, really. Um, TK, correct me if I'm wrong. Do we still call um, things outside of academics, do we call them co-curriculars or extracurriculars? Um, we're going with co-curriculars right now. Okay, co-curriculars, and that's what it was. When, right, I think we were in co-curriculars when, when we were in school, but the point of Jalen getting off camp or getting out of basketball and being able to go do a bunch of other things and myself playing football and still building philanthropies and, and being around other people, understand that's a skill that y'all are getting now and whether y'all realize it or not, y'all are learning how to put your eggs in multiple baskets and be successful in both. Um, even with that wording of a, this isn't an extracurricular, this isn't something extra, this is co, this is a part of my academics, um, this, this, these service hours, you know, playing on this team, this soccer team, this football team, this basketball team, this lacrosse team, this is co, it goes with my academics and, and it's really instilling this idea that I can work at two things and, and they can merge into one, being me, yourself. Um, so I think that's huge. Just letting you guys know that even some of the things systematically and wording um, are things that intrinsically you'll just you'll carry forward without even having to think about. Guys, I'm going to wrap up with a tough one because um, I, I, I don't want to leave this on the table in case anybody was afraid to ask. But where 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 did race come into play at Hoban and or at Tennessee?
Tennessee and or at Baldwin Wallace as far as challenges and opportunities of being a black male in society at a school like an Archbishop Hoagland or at Baldwin Wallace where there, there could be a lot of different factors that we're not aware of being myself here, a 50 year old guy from Stull. Can you tell us about it? Or any reflections there? Yes, I can. And I, I, and I have to be completely honest. Uh, like I mentioned a couple of times before, uh, my first time at Hoban, that was my real first time going to school with you know, many different types of cultures and backgrounds. And me personally, I didn't know how much I would enjoy that until I got to Hoban. Um, and when I, during that time, I really learned, you know, I, I learned a lot about people's backgrounds um, as far as, you know, who they are as a person, but, you know, who, who their families are, you know, what their families have done. And I learned a lot about the world as well. And during that time, I, I did discover that, you know, there, there were some um, social economic differences between uh, some of the friends that I walked into Hoban and I knew just from, you know, playing sports in the neighborhood versus some of the friends that, you know, grew up in you know, Richfield, Stowe, Hudson, um, outside of, you know, the, the Akron suburb area. So that was my first time really understanding, like, okay, I got, I've heard of, you know, people um, doing well, but then I one time became friends with some of my class, classmates at Hoban, I was, you know, welcome into their houses and um, welcome them to their families as well. So that was the first thing. The second thing is um, really, and, and I'll, you really learn about, you really learn about what people care about in high school. You may not have a chance to develop those relationships in college just because you're always on the go and you may not have, depending on what school you go to, could be a huge school as well. But during that time at Hoban, I, I really learned about what it was like to be uh, a human being, you know, what people care about. People always want to you know, be loved. They want to build trust with people. They want to feel uh, involved in something. They want to be a part of a team. It doesn't matter you know, whether that team is in the classroom or that team is on the field. You know, it doesn't matter. So I, I really learned that at Hoban, and I was able to carry that to BW, and I was able to kind of thrive in different situations, the co-curriculars that some of the people who went to BW who, who may look like me, they had to spend a year or two just getting adjusted to be able to, to function and feel comfortable and confident. So I, I do think I learned a lot from Hoban um, in, in that regards. And, and um, just some of the challenges, even at DW, was um, for me personally, I, I always wanted to you know, engage with as many different types of people as I can, because that's just who I am. My grandfather was a, a pastor, and he always um, gave back to depending on, you know, not depending on age, race, or background. He, he was just a giving person. Um, so I knew even from an early age that, you know, it, it really, it mat race matters, but it doesn't. Like, it, it plays into our, our daily lives, but when you value people for being a human being, um, you, you kind of look at things and evaluate things differently. Do I think there are some some racial barriers for me being a Black man that I experienced at Hoban and BW? Yes. Um, do I think I'm better for it? Yes. And do I think I'm able to, to help you know, people who look like me navigate those things in the future and people who don't look like me? Yes. And I do that in my daily job now. So the things that I experienced at Hoban and BW um, has definitely led me to be able to feel confident and comfortable of being real about some of those you know, cultural differences and, and kind of make people smile on the way. Like, you know, there's certain things that, uh, you know, certain references, certain types of foods that, you know, the Black culture will eat. And I'm, I make fun of my friends and different other people from backgrounds because um, they may not want to eat chitlins. I don't like chitlins. LT, I don't know if you eat chitlins, but uh, my, I, it's not something that uh, we would eat. And I know I'm getting off topic, but there's just a ton of things when it comes to race that you learn at Hoban. And you, I really hope you guys take advantage of the time of, to really getting to learn from your peers of different backgrounds at Hoban. So, uh, whew. And, and TK said, he, he asked a loaded question last on purpose. Yeah. I mean, it's a thousand ways I can I can answer this question and take it. So I hope I take it in a direction that's beneficial um, to you all. But um, as TK knows, Jalen Page, Coach Arbo, Ms. Moen, um, I'm a very, I strive to be a very honest, real and candid person. Um, I've had some struggles with race in my, even in my young teenage life, um, all the way through my adult life now. So for me to sit here and say it's something that doesn't matter, doesn't happen, um, I think would not be fair to my experiences or to you guys. Um, do I think it matters? No. 
but does it matter? Yes. And it's almost not my choice. So we turn the lights off on this call. Um, everybody's still there, right? I just act like y'all nine, y'all say it right. Everybody's still there, but nobody has a race, a skin color. We're people and we we live with, within or inside our skin, within inside ourselves, right? So know yourself. Um, this is my big point to race because at the end of the day, who cares? Um, there are people that do. So my first big run in with race, um, it was before I even started going to school at Hoban. And my mom that summer, I could have been in training camp for football or, I, or two days. I don't know what it was, but we were driving somewhere around the Emmon area. And my mom goes, I, I had to be excited about something. But my mom is just, and my mom is a graduate of Hoban as well and very kind, sweet, loving, huge life loving person you one of the most loving people you ever meet and she tells me she goes hey I just want to make sure you know don't be discouraged if the same people that are cheering for you when you score touchdowns and get sacks don't want you to date their daughters I'm like mom what you sound racist that that was my that was my response to my mom and she's like no 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 Troy I want you to be aware of, of just life and, and and not everyone sees everything the same. I get to my sophomore year of high school and I was courting a young lady whose parents weren't as um, comfortable with their daughter dating a, a young black male. And um, that was difficult for her, for me. And it was weird. Ended up growing to know that family really well, um, had a great relationship and race didn't matter, right? Um, but again, where I thought my mom just was speaking outside of her mouth and expect the worst from everyone, it was like, hey, no, it's just having awareness. Because um, you'll get all of these when you score a touchdown, but when you walk up to that person after a game and ask to take their daughter on a date, you may not get the same response. So be ready to um, prepare yourself and act accordingly. The second one, um, I went to school at the University of Tennessee, and and that's um, not as south as it gets, but that's pretty far in the south. And uh, it's a little bit of a different place. You know, sometimes I'll walk into places and people knew who I were and they would stare at me because, oh, he's Latroy Lewis. He plays Tennessee football, right? There were other times I knew that people had no idea who I was. I was just some big black dude walking into a nice restaurant. And who is he? Why are you here? And, and that's the feel. That was the feel that I got. And I understood that. And it bothered me when I was young. And I'm like, why are these people looking at me like this? And why do they care so bad? Why are they looking down on me? Um, when me and my white girlfriend walk in the restaurant holding hands, why are they all look and look down at the floor and turn away? And it went from bothering me to me going back to that whole turn the lights off. Who are you? Who are you? If no one can see you, who are you? I knew who I was. And I grew to not only know that, but accept that and accept that as the most highest level of self-love that there is. Like, I don't need you to approve of me and what I'm doing in life. Cause at the end of the day, I'm going to do what I'm doing and go where I'm going regardless. And um, I also think that uh, when you do come across people like that, Honestly, I mean, racism is hate. It's one of the, the biggest forms of hate that I think there is in the world. And, and and for true hate to be healed, I think it takes God and it takes love. So when you do come across people like that, I think you love them and, and you um, you don't just shame them or score them and, oh, I lost the Zoom. And you're a bad person, but instead you love them and and, and you embrace them. And like I told you, the, in, the instance I had in high school, I became really good friends with that family. And um it was all out of love. So uh, just having an awareness of not everyone uh, sees the world the same, but everyone deserves love um, is, in, is important and, and to know yourself and respond accordingly. Jaylen, love and empathy. Uh, I'm sorry, Jalen, go ahead. I would say love and empathy. Yeah. 100%. Um, so guys, the tone went off, but Italy has a question. So most of these kids need to go back to their next responsibility, which they can. If you want to stay for Italy's question, you can. But we're going to let some trickle back to their next thing. And I'm going to let Italy ask her question, and then we'll wrap up, OK? So Italy, ask your question, and then you guys kind of go out with your moccasins on quietly. Um, my question is, what was the most beneficial um, aspect of the cultural shock, and how did it benefit you in the long run? Of Hoban or, or college? Of Hoban. The culture. Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Can you repeat that one more time? Yeah. What was the biggest benefit of your cultural shock of coming to Hoban? 
um, in, in your, you know what I mean, in the long term of your life? I was more comfortable in my skin. Um, I I knew that uh, no matter who I was around, I was I, I'm still able to be Jalen. And you know, if I if I did the, the right things every day, like treat people with respect, love, dignity, empathy, um, I was doing okay. And like some of the things that LT mentioned, some people may not like that um, just because of who I am, because I'm a black man. But uh, the experience that I got in my teens um, has impacted me, you know, well after in college to to professional setting. It's because you know that experience that you got at an early age, um, it, it will definitely um, carry over. And, I, and I'll give one prime example to that question. When I when I started as a freshman, I um, I grew, I always had like long clothing, baggy clothing was kind of in, kind of still phasing out. In my freshman year, I wore my shirts a lot bigger than they were fitting, but that was just because of the, the culture and the way I grew up in, you know, different parts of the hood, quote unquote. Um, it was kind of a way to distinguish yourself and protect yourself and, and, and let you know people not to mess with you. Um, so I, I kind of spent my freshman year you know, wearing those baggy clothes with my sophomore year, I learned like, okay, you know, I, I saw LT, I saw people like Greg that, you know, bigger, um, came from the same neighborhoods as I was, but they didn't they didn't feel the need that they had to wear you no know, baggy clothes just to to fit in or when they went back home. So that was just one of the things that I took away at my time from Hoban and it, it, it has allowed me to thrive in some environments, professional environments today. Now I piggyback off Jalen. Um I just think it's huge to to know yourself and to be you. Um, it's no like God made one of you. You're not me. You're not Jalen. You're not TK. You're not Miss Moe. You're not Paige. You're not Coach Arbo. You are you. And it, oh, and by the way, Italy, what you are is a great question asker. By the way, um, but know who you are and be you. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. And and likewise, um, my adversity that Hoban and and my um, similar situations to Jalen. Um, that's what it taught me to be me. Uh, you know, when I talked about I did, I thought I was leaving Hoban after that first semester. Um, I could have played that into the whole race question, to be honest, because for me, I didn't feel like I fit in. Um, even beyond Jalen, I didn't go to a private um, elementary, middle school. I was predominantly in the hood, Akron Public School, and that's what I knew. And I get to Hoban and extreme culture shock for me. Um, honestly, in my middle elementary school, I, I could probably count on three or four hands the amount of um, non-minority non students that I went to school with. And then I get to a school where I'm only one of a handful of minorities and it was uncomfortable. Um, a lot of those kids, whether they were black, white, Hispanic, Asian, whatever it was, a lot of them went to private school. So even, even black kids at Hoban that went to a private school, they were already in cliques. So for me, I was an outsider on top of being an outsider. And it was me and Greg, we were like this because we had similar feelings. We came from similar structures. We were actual rivals growing up. Um, but that's part of where we joined. The, we created this huge bond and it was people like TK and Coach Oda. It's kind of like, hey, you two are great people and it's going to be a great place for you. Embrace it. And, and we embraced it. And in turn, the people and the students, the staff embraced us. And um, ultimately, that embrace is is that idea of embracing um, new things and and uncomfortable things. Like it taught me to be comfortable being uncomfortable. And when you're uncomfortable outside your own skin, that's when you can. I know you got somebody in this room has heard this word from TK, but that's when you're able to transcend um, what you think you're capable of. Um, and and that skill is probably a, I could put that right up there with communication. And it also taught me to communicate with. Um, an entirely different cohort of people. I was in the hood constantly and I grew up in inner city of Akron and I spoke a certain way. I got the Hoban and um, when things, some of my peers made fun of me for the way I spoke. And it was kind of like, a, I wasn't speaking wrong, so to say. And I still don't think it was or is, but that's how I talk. And it's like a, no, no, I mean, cool. But what are you saying when you say that? Well, why don't you say it this way? Or why don't you, just speak how you like. It, this is one of the things that's hard to explain. Um, because I would go back home and hang out with my friends, and they go, Dang, Troy, you talk like a white boy now. No. And and at first I used to cuddle up and like, dang, now I don't belong in the Hoban environment. Now I don't belong in a hood. Ooh. Like, who is Troy? 
who is Troy? And that was really the point where I had to learn who I was at 14, 15 years old, because I didn't belong here anymore. I don't really belong here yet. So who am I? Um, and it became a no, I don't talk like a white boy. And how do you talk like a, a race or ethnicity anyway? I speak like I'm educated. And that's when I learned, Troy, that's who you are. You're an educated black man. So why would you ever, ever um, downplay that? That's your strength, not your weakness. And, and those experiences at Hoban taught me to be comfortable being uncomfortable and learning myself and learning my strengths and, and being able to play off of those um, throughout life, to be honest. I got 30 seconds to add to that. Yeah. There's so on top of what LT just shared, there's uh, on top of, you know, sometimes when we go back to certain neighborhoods that we grew up and we go to another er area that we experience in culture shock, sometimes you know, people will make fun of you for code switching, quote unquote. And that's when you talk a different way, when you speak to the one group of friends or one group and another way to another group. And that's something that I still had to consider, like, am I being fake? But the question, the overall answer to that question is no, I'm trying to communicate in a way that this person can understand. Um, and that's one thing to always keep in mind that, okay, just because I, I may grow up and I may grow up in my neighborhood and I may commute to my, communicate to my friends one way, I have to communicate to my, my other group of friends or my classmates a little differently just so they can understand. And I think my experience at Hoban has allowed me to um, think of ways to, to create those inclusive, diversive, inclusive environments even in the professional environment that I worked in today. All right, guys, uh, that was incredible. Better than I ever dreamed of. You guys are uh, a blessing to us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you. Guys. Hey, thank you. Try. Try. Uh, if anybody wants to hang around, we'll have them hang around for a second.